Hi, it's Jan Beta, and I am going to take another look at the TRS-80 Model 1 today that I tried to fix in the last episode. And I am going to try some different approaches today and replace some chips and also see if I can build a cable for the keyboard. So that's the plan for today. And I hope you enjoy this episode. I have to apologize that it took me so long, but I had so much uh, real life things to do in the meantime that I didn't really manage to um, finish the video. I started it right away and kept working on it, but there's so many issues with this thing that I, yeah, didn't really manage to put together some kind of a uh, reasonable video out of it. So this is the video right here. I actually started this like two weeks ago, I think, and um, kept working on it whenever I found the time. So um, hope you enjoy it. I got the first replacement parts in, so it's time to continue the TRS-80 adventure. <laughs> Let me take a couple of seconds to thank my sponsor for this video, which is PCBWay. And as you probably know, if you're watching my videos, they offer uh, PCB manufacturing services. They also offer PCB assembly services, actually, that start at $30, including free worldwide shipping. So that's pretty much a very nice bargain. And if you have some project planned where you could make use of that, I highly recommend checking them out. The first thing I want to do is to replace the wonky Z57, which is this one, originally a 74C04, and I read up on the issue and the modern replacement part for this actually is the 74HC04, this one, and you can also use the 74HCT04 it seems, but that's uh, specified for higher input voltages. So um, the 74HC04 should be the perfect replacement for this. This is rather inconveniently located right uh, below the level 2 expansion ROM board here. So we are going to have to remove this before I can work on that. That's going to be fun. So I'm just trying to gently remove this. Okay, it's not that bad. And I think I'm just going to use some, some hot glue or something to put it back, stick it back on here. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Just using some mild force to, yeah, this foam pad ripped a bit. I actually wonder if these became conductive over the years, maybe. No conductivity, which of course, if you stick it to a circuit board, is a desired behavior. Yeah, we had something there because I touched the probes together, but there's just nothing going on there. Okay, that's good. Just marking the chip I want to desolder here. And I'm adding some li liquid flux. To make it easier to melt the soda. There we go. I'm also soldering in a socket to make possible future repairs easier. I, I always do that whenever I replace a chip basically, so... kind of generally a good idea. And it also prevents the IC you want to put in there from getting too much heat. Because obviously semiconductors can die when they're exposed to too much heat. So, 
in goes our 74HC04. So I can get it out of the tube. Bending the pins a bit inwards, because usually they fit better if you do that. There we go. That's in there. Nice and tight. So, it could of course be other things uh, down the line, but this was my main suspect for messing up the video sync. So let's see if it actually helps. <laughs> okay, we get an NTSC lock kind of thing. Not still the same behavior. Hmm. So the chip was kind of oh, okay. That's a bit better, <laughs> but still we get a kind of kind of a rainbow uh, color burst kind of picture there, which is not like it's supposed to look. Yeah, we basically get the same behavior as before. What a pity! In no way this got any better, unfortunately. Okay, I have the scope hooked back up, and this should be. Our vertical sink and it's still pulsing which I think was it definitely looks better than before so we get a really sharp edge there which is great hmm but it's still kind of pulsing on the sink pin okay now it looks really stable hmm Okay, so Z5, which is a 74C00, also had kind of a wonky signal. That's the chip that actually mixes the composite signal uh, to the combined signal. I think I want to try to replace that too. And if that doesn't help, we're going down the video divider chain, I guess. So the one I put in there now is also an HC version instead of the 74C00 that was in there before. So maybe this should be a replacement, a, a legit replacement for this. And yeah, maybe that changed things. Let's just see. No, that didn't help. It's still the same behavior and the signals look exactly the same as before on this chip. So. The other one was probably good. Um, yeah. So this machine continues to give me headaches. I was pretty determined that one of the chips I just replaced uh, would be the source of the problem. Uh, that we still don't get a proper video sync. The video sync is uh, basically determined by the video divider chain. The vertical sync uh, is derived from the system clock, uh, which is determined by the oscillator and uh, it is buffered and divided by some logic chips. And uh, actually the speed is also determined by these two capacitors here, which are a 22 nanofarad capacitor and a 47 nanofarad capacitor, um, polyester film style. And I was able to order actually um, ones, they, they come in all kinds of different shapes and colors. And I ordered some that uh, pretty closely match 
the originals. So um, I'm going to try to replace these because actually these are... I don't think they are very common to fail, but um, I measured them in circuit, which is of course not the proper way to measure them, and they gave me kind of weird readings. So maybe they got a bit wonky, or one of them. So I'm just going to try to replace these, uh, order these, because I just uh, found them uh, to look original. And these are actually th the way they are placed on the circuit board, is actually by... Uh, there's like little insulation tubes put on the legs here so they can fold over and make room for this uh, ribbon cable that goes to the ROMs, the level 2 basic ROMs. And yeah, that's pretty, I don't know, not a very reliable construction, I guess. I've read some blog posts where people had the legs break off of these actually because they got uh, worked too much uh, while repairing these things. And yeah, I'm just going to try to replace those. Maybe that's that's worth a shot, I guess. So let's see. Uh, yeah, and for those people watching, maybe you have an idea what else I could check. Uh, maybe you would like to comment on that. I'm just going to try with the parts I have. Might even be able to use the insulation again. Yeah, I'm just reusing the insulators. <laughs> so this is going to look pretty much the same after this replacement. Maybe it's going to work better. Hopefully. So this is the 47 nanofarad one. I think these are just a uh, heat shrink tubing, maybe, or maybe some kind of silicone. They are not shrinking, so probably it's just uh, silicone stuff. Okay, let's see if that helped any. Okay, here it goes. No, nope. still very much the same issue. <laughs> uh. Yeah, that was kind of a long shot, but at least uh, it looks the same as before, so <laughs> that didn't hurt much to replace those uh, capacitors. Yeah, there's a couple of other chips that could be responsible for the video sync being messed up. But I don't have all of them. I don't have replacement parts for all the chips, so I'm probably going to have to order more chips. So another thing I want to follow is the processor clock didn't look very clean uh, when I scoped the Z80, Z80 processor. Uh, so I'm also going to check the buffer it goes to, which is a 74LS367 uh, at Z72. And that is basically the, the processor clock also determines the video sync clock, which I pointed out previously and I'm just going to I think it gets messed up somewhere although the we saw like an undershoot on the signal it should be TTL level at the high point and should be uh, pretty much a square wave signal and it looked a bit uh, wonky on the scope which might be caused by my uh, rudimentary uh, like very long ground connection that I made to the oscilloscope to have things uh, more handy. Uh, I just hooked up a long ground lead to this 
wire I soldered onto the ground plane here. And that might be the cause of that looking wonky, but basically what I want to say is that uh, that looked wonky and I'm going to try to replace the buffer because I bought some 74LS367s to try that. I'm just basically guessing because it's really difficult to determine where that signal gets messed up and why. Z72 is this one here. 74LS367AN. So, I'll just quickly mark that. Let's desolder that. Okay, another try with the new chip. Huh. Yeah, no. That's actually the same, I guess. Yeah, that's the exact same picture. It's a nice rainbow colored picture, but it's driving me nuts, basically. Ah. So it seems I'm not really getting much further with the parts I have with the repair. So let's try and do another thing that I have planned. Um, reconnect the keyboard, basically. And what I want to do, so there was this uh, flat flex cable that was just soldered on to the keyboard and to the PCB, to the main uh, PCB. So um, I had to remove it in order to be able to work on the PCB more. And what I want to do is to have a solution where uh, the keyboard is still detachable and I'm going to use something like this, uh, which is just a standard IDE, PC IDE uh, hard disk cable, PATA cable with uh, 40 uh, wires. This only has 20 wires, but you can use basically one row of this connector and an angled pin header, which I also got some. And I think what I want to do is actually put, uh, to solder on these wires on one side. Uh, I haven't decided if it's going to be the keyboard side or the main PCB side and just put a connector on the other side, a uh, pin header. So I have, uh, it's taking, these pin headers take up a lot of space in the case and I think uh, it's uh, pretty vital that the case can close without any obstructions. So I'm just going to desolder this for now and then see which way it fits in the case. There we go. Yeah, this is just a single-sided uh, PCB, so it's much easier to desolder than on the other side. <laughs> and the pins are numbered, 1, 2, 20, so we're not going to have much issues with this. The, the pins on the other side are also numbered. So we're just going to have to check continuity and see if our pins are connected. On the main board we have to make sure that the connection goes to both sides of the board because there are some traces on the top side and some on the bottom side, as we've seen when I desoldered it in the last video. Okay, doesn't look too bad. I think we can make up our minds about what, where to put the pin header and where to just solder on the wires. So here's the rather uh, dirty still case. So there's definitely going to be more episodes because I at least have to refurb uh, the case too. So um, this sits in here like so. Oh, the other way around probably. 
Yes. <laughs> so this sits in here like so. We don't have a lot of room here. And this sits on top here like so. And we have almost no room between that. So I guess what we should do is have our angled connector on the, from this perspective, the bottom side of this PCB. So um, we're going to solder an angled connector into here and maybe have it facing this side. So we can just bend the wire here and have our keyboard sitting on there. So basically I want this to be located here, I guess. No, qu quite kind of sure that I want it at an angle because otherwise the connector won't fit. Because there's all kinds of other components on here. So maybe I'm just going to solder it in while the connector is connected there. Yeah, I'm just bending this upwards ever so slightly. This is going to work actually. Yeah, let's solder it in I guess. And I think I want to solder from the top side and the bottom side to just to make sure that all the pins make good connection. Smooth. <laughs> okay, now we have to determine how long our cable should be. Let's go with something like this, I guess. Yeah. And as I said, there's multiple variations of this, so you could fit a connector on the keyboard side as well, if you wanted to. But you would have to have a cable that uh, fits that specification. <laughs> So the, the length of the cable, you need a very short IDE cable for that and I I have a lot of these longer IDE cables but no shorter ones. So yeah, what I want to do now is to determine how the pins are actually connected and using the lower row of the connector here and I have to see which of the wires actually comes out where. Okay, pin one is actually on the red cable, that's nice. Yeah, so we need to use every other cable. So that's going to be fun. <laughs> so as I said, pin one is actually going to be the marked uh, cable here. And then we always leave out one cable because this is 40 cables and not 20, and we only need 20. And the connector is wired in such a way that every other cable is one that we need. Just going to split these and then uh, strip the insulation. I don't think you have to watch all of this. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay, looks legit so far. <laughs> yeah, you have to basically twist these things together and uh, maybe tin them. So that's the next step, probably. So, pin one is here, is it? Yes, it is. Uh, so we should put this one in here and solder on the others one after another. <laughs> and then we should have our little keyboard connector in place. This should probably work. Let's see.
So this actually looks pretty good. Um, and I think this should be flexible enough so it don't doesn't break anytime soon. I think I guess you could add some like a piece of uh, adhesive tape or something here or some hot glue, which is probably quite a good idea. But um, yeah, for now I'm just going to leave it like this and uh, hope for the best basically <laughs> and see that these don't break off. Um, yeah, let's connect it to the board. I don't have high hopes that we actually can use the keyboard, but we can at least uh, see if anything changes uh, at that state, at the state the machine is at, at the moment, which is pretty much non-functional <laughs> still. Just testing the connections. Always a good idea. So pin one should go to here. Yeah, we have connection and we don't want any shorts. Yeah, that seems good too. Okay, this supposedly should work. If the system was working at all, this should uh, make the connection to the keyboard. Let's see if that actually changes uh, any of the behavior we, are get we got. So turn this on again. Okay, no. It's pretty much the same behavior. But our LED lights up, <laughs> which is a very good thing, I guess. Yeah, so pretty much get the same picture as before, which is kind of a rainbow colored thing. And we don't get any changes if we use the keyboard. But the keyboard LED lights up, which is a good thing. and. Uh, yeah, this should, in theory, work pretty well. And we can still uh, put the keyboard aside while working on the main PCB, so that's a plus. Yeah, hmm. That's about all I can do for this episode, I think, I'm afraid. And I'm sorry that there wasn't more in here, but this thing gives me a bit of a headache still. And yeah, there's so many more things I could try, but I don't have the time. And there is going to be, I think I'm going to do another episode. Uh, we are far into Octandy already, so um, the Septandy thing is over pretty much. And I think I want to do something else in between because uh, people want to see different stuff and maybe more. Uh, happy stuff. I'm not very happy with this, as you can probably imagine, but uh, yeah, that's the way it is. So, thank you very much for watching. Hope you still enjoyed this, even though it doesn't have a happy ending as of now. And uh, maybe there were some informative bits in here, like building the little cable and talking a bit about the video sync signal. Uh, yeah. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters and my YouTube channel members. Uh, thanks. And hope to see you all again in this channel. I'm Jan Beta. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.